For as long as man has dreamed, he has dreamed of soaring with the birds. With the invention of hang gliding, we have finally realized that ancient dream in our lifetimes. Some of us feel more at home in the sky than on the earth, but none of us are born with wings. Free flight is only possible with proper equipment, specialized training, and systematic attention to safety. Hi, my name is Paul Voigt. I've been flying hang glider since 1972. During that time, I've taught hundreds of students to hang glide, including my son, Ryan, who is now an instructor and flight school owner himself. While I consider hang gliding very safe, over the years, a number of flying accidents have reminded us that safety begins on the ground. Despite all too common lapses in pre-flight routines, pilots often get lucky and walk away with just scratches or a broken down tube. But when luck runs out, the results can be tragic. Whether you're a new student or a skilled pilot, you should periodically review your pre-flight procedures. By paying systematic attention to safety on the ground, you will be setting yourself up for success in the air, which will keep your flying safe for many years to come. Flying sites vary greatly. Some have beautiful launch ramps, and spacious groomed landing zones with many options for emergency landings. Others are wild and rugged and demand more advanced flying skills. While sites generally have an established minimum rating, you and your instructor, if you're still in a program, must decide if you're up to it. Pre-flight safety begins with this assessment. Remember that coastal sites, mountain sites, tow sites all have their individual demands. Ask yourself these five questions. Do I feel comfortable setting up and launching at this site? Is there an established landing zone that I can safely land in even if the conditions get strong or the prevailing winds switch on me? If I don't make an LZ, can I handle the emergency landing options? Are the potential terrain effects like rotor, canyon suck, and powerful thermal activity within my capabilities. Does everything feel right? Listen to your gut. Remember, if a site seems scary to you, you might not be ready for it. You've assessed the site, walked the landing zone, hung out on launch, and now you're ready to fly. Before you even get your glider off the truck, you must assess the weather. For beginner and novice rated pilots, easy, forgiving, and mild conditions offer the best scenarios for safe learning experiences. Intermediate and advanced pilots are released to fly in a much wider range of conditions, which allow them to hone their advancing skill set. It's always better to be on the ground wishing you were in the sky than in the sky wishing you were on the ground. It may seem obvious, but one of the most difficult pre-flight checks to remember is a head check. You're not ready to fly until you are mentally ready to fly. First, are you in good health? Second, is your mood right? Are you feeling overly daring? Or perhaps the opposite, nervous and unsure? Are you upset from a recent divorce or on the tail end of a hangover? or perhaps both, since they seem to go together. Are visitors or other pilots distracting you with cameras, flirtatious behavior, or revealing clothing? Assessing your physical and mental condition and recognizing distractions are very important factors in keeping your flying safe. It is critical that your mind is clear and focused and ready for the demands of free flight. Don't even set up if your head isn't in the game. The weather is perfect. You're feeling good about flying today. It's time to set up and
and check your equipment. Without safe equipment, you can't have a safe flight. Always take into account changing winds while assembling your glider. Now that your glider is assembled, it's time to do a complete pre-flight walk around. Check all the connections. Batten stations, cables, tubing, and sail condition with a routine pre-flight that is uninterrupted. If you are interrupted in any way, start over at the beginning. You and your glider are good to go. Before you hook in, be sure to reassess the weather. Conditions often get stronger or change dramatically while you're setting up. You must have the maturity to postpone or even cancel the decision to launch if conditions have become questionable. Never consider your initial weather check your final weather check. almost time to fly. Once you have the harness on, make sure that the leg loops are actually on and all the pull strings are correctly routed. Check that your helmet is secured, your radio is working, and then hook into your glider. Every flight, every single one, needs to be preceded by a hang check. There is no substitute for a full, prone test hang immediately before executing your launch run. A lapse at this critical stage can cost you your life. Perfect. Have another pilot stabilize your glider and visually check that you are hooked in. The carabiner should be locked. Whether you are flying a borrowed or rented glider, or you're in your own glider, you are also checking to make sure that you are suspended the correct height above the base tube for optimum control. While hang checking, once again, go through a mental assessment to determine that all is a go. It's never too late to unhook and go home. Do you still feel good about this flying site? Launching safely and getting to the landing zone without a mishap? Is your helmet fully secured? Is your harness in place and ready for launch? Is your radio working? Are your instruments ready? And most importantly, are you hooked in? Are you hooked in? It can never hurt to double and triple check to make sure you're hooked in properly. If there's any delay or a distraction in your launch routine, Check again, just to be sure that you're hooked in. You're hooked in. Woohoo! You're ready to fly. Stay safe, have fun, because that's what it's all about. <laughs>